Hello and welcome to Quarterlight, your car brochure channel. And in today's episode, the Ford Galaxy Mark 1. Welcome back and if you're new to Quartzlite, we're a car brochure channel looking at car brochures from around the world for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s and sometimes beyond. So if you think that might interest you, please do like and subscribe. That really does help the channel grow. Anyway, back to today's episode, the Ford Galaxy. Yes, it's Ford Friday. Every Friday we look at a Ford brochure. Now the Ford Galaxy, of course, not a very cool car, not a very collectible car, a very ordinary car and really that's what the channel started looking at and what the channel is really all about, the ordinary everyday car and you couldn't get more ordinary than this. First launched in 1995 in the first generation guys which is what we're looking at today and the brochure we're looking at is kind of like a launch brochure so it's interesting to see how the the as the cats just run around everywhere, sorry about that. As we, very interesting to see how the range started and how the trim levels were kind of like sorted out. But in this brochure, it's strange because the trim levels are there, but not really there either. It'll make sense when I go through the brochure. But anyway, let's have a look at today's brochure. So here is today's brochure, and it's a nice one actually. It's a nice sort of glossy cover quite a quality brochure actually and Ford at this time did make some nice uh, car brochures now I said it was a very ordinary car I shouldn't really call it a car depending on whereabouts you're from you probably call this many different things an MPV multi-purpose vehicle a people carrier maybe even a minivan but it's never a really a cool car it was never a car you certainly aspired to own was it it was a car that you had because you needed it i wonder if any of these will ever show up at classic car shows as being you know of their time because the mpvs are now kind of like dying out another vehicle that's been taken over by suvs although in reality this is a far more practical clever way of moving people around than an suv which really Considering the size of them, they don't have a great deal of space inside, do they? So, looking back, maybe they may have the time in the classic car scene one day. Who knows? This is particularly an interesting brochure for the Ford Galaxy. It says, Travel First Class. And this is a launch brochure. A very early one. Um, I don't think production actually started till June 1995. I'll show you the date on this one. It's on the back here, so let's see if we can focus in and move in and find that date. Like it's a nice reflected brush, this one. There you go. May 1995. So before really the production started, so you'll find some of the things in here haven't really been ironed out, haven't been sorted out. They've got four trim levels in here that are there, but you couldn't really order them so we'll have a look at that and that's kind of like later in the brochure but anyway let's move on to the first page of the brochure yeah the cats are a bit crazy today so you might have a few little cats running around chasing noises so i do apologize i suppose just waffling for a little bit i should explain why the cats are a bit crazy today last few days it's been very hot very humid here in canada mid 30s with feel like temperatures of 42 been crazy hot we don't have air conditioning the cats have just been laying around um, not really moving too much not really that happy now it's broke we've got rain the temperatures have kind of like halved and now the cats are happy and running around so <laughs> that's why they're a little bit weird today now going back to the topic of the day the ford galaxy starts off very sort of plain it's just a contents page and you'll see a few times it compares the size of a mondeo and this at the back here is your galaxy showing that it's the same length approximately of a mondeo but obviously more room inside it says at the top here i will build a car 
for the great multitude. Kind of weird quotes throughout this brochure, I'm afraid. And I suppose we should also mention when we're talking about the Ford Galaxy, it was kind of like a joint venture between Ford and Volkswagen, which kind of like badge engineered three vehicles. So we had the Volkswagen Charan, we had the Seat Alhambra, and we also had the Ford Galaxy. Ford Galaxy in the UK was by far the best seller of those. But you'll find that there's kind of like a very much a mix between Ford and Volkswagen throughout um, the design process and depending on your what engines you got, kind of like a joint venture in that way. Interesting at this time to get these joint ventures. Let's move on. It is a very big brochure actually, this one. It's kind of like huge. They must have spent a lot of money on this brochure and they did have some really big brochures at this time actually. This is a much nicer page now. We got a big fold out page of the Galaxy here in gear guys. Interestingly, you couldn't even order the gear at the start. Again, we'll show something at the back when we're looking at the uh, spec levels, but interesting to see a picture that you couldn't actually order, of a car you couldn't actually order. So, the car you aspired to have the gear, you couldn't even aspire to have it at this time. Well, you could, but you had to wait for it, basically. Let's fold in the brochure back again. We also get this rather nice picture of the interior. Actually, just before we look at that page, I think we've kind of like missed a page of all these flaps. There's a number of these images showing your Mondeo and the uh, galaxy behind it. Bit of a quote here from Henry Ford. It will be big enough for the family, but small enough for the individual. Dated 1907. Nice to see that, I must admit. Even though I really don't like these quotes, it's nice to see it anyway, isn't it? Just try and hold them pages back because it's not really a, a brochure. A lot of these brochures haven't hardly been opened. I just kind of like open them up really for the uh, video because I don't kind of like like to go through brochures beforehand because it's hard to show surprise um, or get excited about something I've already seen the picture. So I try and like you know go with the flow and just talk as I'm on camera rather than practice. So this interior, you can see it's an interesting vehicle, you know, you've got little picnic tables in the back, lovely little armrests in there as well, very swooping style, this was very much from Ford, uh, Ford, Ford had these swooping dashboards at the time, even though it's a joint venture with Volkswagen, very much Ford dashboards, the instrumentation was a bit more Volkswagen I think. Uh, he is shown as an automatic as you can see so like all the car is you're not going to get excited about this car but practicality is the key it also tells us at the bottom here it's very small print you probably can't see it this interior is that gear model that we can't actually order it does actually tell us a first clue about that so it says it's available in autumn 1995 so you had to wait a few months if you wanted the gear model um, really there was only really two trim levels you could order from the start and we'll like I say we'll have a look at that later on so I'm moving on to the next page now you're saying Galaxy from Ford very wordy this brochure I can't read it all otherwise this review would be hours long but the two models shown here as that gear model that you couldn't actually order yet at the time um, next to actually the most basic model which you could order this was available at launch the Galaxy Aspen Aspen was used in the 90s kind of like did not um, Ford base models I mean they got kind of like got fed up a point an L but really it's an L um, and they got fed up about of course the popular and popular pluses to the not base models so they come up with this new name Aspen but it's the same theme it's a very base model and you can certainly just look from a glance um, how much different it looked from a higher specs model 
black bumpers, you know, simple wheel trims, um, very much non colour coordinated rubbing strips. They really like to, still at this time actually, Ford, you really used to say, you know, you've got a base model there. Um, <laughs> but so yeah, that was the theme, and you can see even like roof rails on the gears, no roof rails on there. So, very much a stripped down version, even though they call it a fancier name of Aspen. Another look at an interior. This time it's telling us this is the GLX. Now, the GLX is another model you could get at launch, and in fact, the only two models you could get at launch was that basic Aspen and this GLX um, and already you can see it's a, a little bit of a step down from that gear model you've got your typical reach and rake uh, steering um, it tells you we've got power steering etc etc but we'll look at the spec levels later on there's a nice little diagram later on actually that shows um, the spec levels for the four models two of them you couldn't get two of them you could uh, but interesting to see how it sets them out on this very early uh, launch brochure okay next page shows another nice image of the galaxy this time another gear trim that you can order um, and this particular one is saying it's got optional extras so it may have some things that are not standard it's got these spot lamps it's got these alloy wheels Colour coordinated rubbing strips, roof boys, shiny um, door mirrors. So certainly a high spec model. It's also telling us this is the 2.8 V6, which is very much a uh, Volkswagen power plant. The next page, however, really shows what the vehicle is all about. Seating for, what is it? Seven people, so a nice seven seater car. Um, this very sort of funky interior isn't it this is the GLX interior um, so very interesting like even on the sides here we've got this very strange fabric really making it quite lively I guess kid friendly would you say I'm not sure how I feel about this pattern I must admit very 90s isn't it okay so the next page is called comfort a priority really showing the flexibility of these seats this is going to be a far far back seat so you can see how they fold down the middle row looks like it's folded down have these little cup holders in there although obviously you couldn't leave a drink on there if you drove anywhere because they're very shallow but very practical having these little tables amazing when i saw this picture just now that how many lights are in there we've got a sunroof on there as well although we have to remember that this is actually the gear which we couldn't order yet but never mind uh, but nice to see even like even sort of armrests on the very very back seats always the biggest issue of course was if you had this packed full of people virtually no luggage space whatsoever did you And then we get this see-through image again the gear although this one in this case is a six seater we've got these two sort of captain style chairs in the middle which do look nice um, and a bit of a swiveling front seat just to show the flexibility oh, i was just about to flick the page i've just realized it does open up to show you know flexibility of the seats i think this is showing a kind of like a um business environment i guess with it around got a little bit of a table you've got your you've got your cell phone there and your hard hats and you know you're an architect aren't you <laughs> there you go uh showing the flexibility also showing the downfall of just having that tiny space for a little tiny bit of luggage i guess it does also show um these really quite nice actually little images of the different sort of seat configurations this telling is either the gear which you couldn't get with six captain chairs as standard showing the different layouts of the different seats even you know how much room you had if you folded them all down of course and then it's telling us the glx 
is fitted with a seven seater as standard so six seater for the for the gear seven seater for the glx and the aspen the base model available with five or seven seats that's strange isn't it to order a car like this and only order it as a five seater that's a unusual idea interesting how they've set it up here on this particular model must be a seven seater and fold the middle one down but still strange idea to only order it as a five seater i think kind of like misses the point of having the car i think a um, little bit of dimensions which really don't mean a great deal on camera next page is entitled power and performance so it's going to give us an idea of the different engine choices which is going to be interesting so let's zoom in on those there you go technical engine data so you can get it as a very lowly two liter or 1998 cc four cylinder that would have been a very much a uh, ford power plant and i think that would have been the only ford engine available actually because the 2.8 v6 that's very much a volkswagen unit 2792 cc with a v6 engine and that 1.9 turbo diesel i believe is very much a volkswagen unit as well gives you a little bit of an idea about the fuel consumption there uh, very much the leader is that diesel doing 57 on a constant 56 the 2.8 drops all the way to 32 kind of like feel for this particular car that probably the turbo diesel would probably the car to pick although certainly the 2.8 with a 5 speed top speed of 123 0 to 60 in 10 seconds is pretty fast for a big um, MPV really isn't it of this time you can get it as both your five speed um, or an automatic it looks like you couldn't get the diesel as an auto law so five speed standard on the turbo diesel um, and then you you got an option on the two liter of auto or the five speed and the 2.8 could be an auto or five speed automatic i think that's very much a volkswagen automatic unit as well and on the next page it gives us a little nice little see-through so we can see that ford uh two liter uh badging on top of that engine like i said that would be a ford unit but even the uh turbo diesel and um the v6 no doubt would have had a ford badge on them even though they were volkswagen units here we go so this is an interesting page entitled environment and this is going to be talking about you know cfcs and um nice recycling etc but i wanted to show this interesting image interesting color one of the reds color range uh, available for the galaxy there is a color chart at the end so we can have a look at that um, but you know it was quite uh, interesting in that particular color the model it doesn't tell us what the model is but we've got color coordinated bumpers um, so it probably looks like the um, glx if i had to guess almost mistaken for a gear that little badge isn't a gear badge that's going to be the g for galaxy and we'll have a look at that badge in a moment i think next page entitled personal touch all talk about accessories um i guess we can probably zoom in on that that g for galaxy in a moment so this is probably a glx with lots of lot um accessories on there you can see little um touches such as this and those alloy wheels are different that's probably just something from the accessory list the thrown on another interesting color it's actually green or it looks a little bit bluey on camera but um even in the 90s you know the cars had much nicer colors didn't they than they do today today it's all gray isn't it anyway let's not moan you can see the g for galaxy there like i was talking about and you can also see that sort of dealer fitted um, spoiler on the back and these quite unusual alloy wheels and here it's telling us the four models you could get the aspen the glx yes you could get those at launch the gear 
you had to wait it's telling us awesome 1995 so a few months to wait for the gear no sign no mention anywhere of this the ultima anywhere in the brochure i don't believe that actually came for a few years so that's unusual for them to throw that in at launch obviously they must have thought they was going to do it quite early on but i'm pretty sure it was a couple of years before you could get a galaxy ultima i think they actually played around with a gear x before the ultima actually maybe um but like i said a strange brochure showing all that just showing they didn't have a clue what the range were going to be at the time like i said aspen glx you could get let's have a look at some of this um information about those models having said that it is nice to see the trim levels laid like this so you can see the picture and the writing on there i mean that's quite nice so like i said the aspen available as a five or seven seats why they offered it as a five seater i really don't know that's a funny idea although certainly i know a lot of um the older generation may i say at this time did like a higher um seating position um easier to get in and out of you know suvs weren't as popular as they are today um so maybe that's why they had that option of a five seat seater i'm not sure so you get this as a two liter or that 1.9 turbo diesel um with a five speed manual transmission standard we've got an immobilizer system central double locking steel safety cage with engine compartment cross beam and side impact door beams driver's airbag rake and reach adjustable steering column three rear easy remove passenger seats with seven possible fixing points so you could order it as a five seater but still move those seats around which was quite nice putting one to the very back etc so that's quite interesting um uh re seats form to uh, form a table a uh, seven seat model incorporates rear heater avail also available electronically operated front windows 2006 rds stereo radio cassette with key code anti-theft coding so you can see on there it's just very simple um, wheel trims on there to denote the base model i think the main thing that really shouts base model though is these black bumpers where all the other models have got color coordinated and i guess you know at this time mid 90s it really stood out you know as a base model if you had something with black bumpers on and you know that certainly did you can also see that there's no sort of roof bars on there um, in this particular case the other thing is the non-color coordinated um, rubbing strips on these as well just this black rubbing strips really shouts out as being a base model doesn't it um, it also gives us a little bit of a glimpse of the seat color for the base model it's called aspen flow fabric very sort of 90s color isn't it that as well just going back to the picture i've just kind of like noticed there isn't that sort of g badge on there either you know where it says galaxy all the other models had a g on there they didn't even bother to stick the uh, g for galaxy sticker on there or badge on there which is a little bit a little bit mean isn't it ford had a way of being particularly mean on the base models there you get your glx which comes as a seven seater and i guess at launch if you wanted it straight away this was kind of like your top model really at launch um choice of a two liter the 2.8 v6 or the 1.9 turbo diesel you know any um engine choice you wanted really equipment wise what did you get on there so you had uh, abs with traction control on the 2.8 immobilizer system central double locking electronically operated and heated door mirrors driver's airbag 180 degree swiveling front seats and fold up trays four passenger map reading lights rake and reach adjustable steering column five rear easy remove passenger seats second row seats fold to form a table rear heater electronically operated tilt or 
slide sunroof, electrically operated front windows, 2006 RDS stereo radio cassette with key code anti theft coding. So pretty well equipped really um, and I kind of like think you wanted the GLX just to have that um, uh, swiveling front seat really that really was a kind of nice feature on these still looks like it's on um, wheel trims though and they are particularly horrendous I really don't like them wheel trims whatsoever though you could obviously spec it up to have the alloy wheels if you wanted as you can see we do have the G4 Galaxy badge on this particular model which is nice weird that they didn't put it on the base model and obviously we got colour coordinated bumpers colour coordinated um, um, rubbing strips still no roof bars though interestingly um, but it did look a little bit nicer than your base model seat wise you did have to put up with these quite horrendous 90s fabric coloured seats though I think they are very 90s aren't they and I think a little bit too much going on personally let me know in the comments what you think of those seats of the time I would say and very much the 90s here we have the gear in this rather lovely metallic red colour chart coming up we'll be able to see the colour names we've got alloy wheels on there as well it's telling us this has got the six captain chairs so it's not a seven seater six captain chairs so let's see the equipment on offer um, we've got a choice of any of the engines uh, we have ABS traction control immobilizer system remote control central double locking electronically operated and heated door mirrors heated windscreen quick clear alloy wheels four passenger map reading lights graphic information module 180 degree swiveling front seats and fold up trays four rear easy remove passenger seats when they say easy remove they're going to be heavy seats so it's not that easy rear heater electronically operated tilt or slide sunroof electrically operated front and rear windows quarter vents with global closing remote control 2007 rds stereo radio cassette with key code anti-theft coding and built-in connectors to take and cd auto changer although like i say not available until autumn 1995 so you can actually get that at launch um, but certainly the nicest looking we can see that the uh, G isn't on there we've got this um, gear badge just the gear badge if it'll tune in to show us the gear badge there we go we just have the gear badge on this one so uh, badging wise the base model didn't have a badge GLX got that nice G this got your typical gear badge that you kind of aspired to have you know I don't know how much aspiration you have to have a Galaxy really but there you go seat wise still not the nicest I think it's a little bit nicer than the previous two I think it'd be a little bit easier to live with doesn't shout gear though does it but you do get these rather lovely um, armrests which are a uh, particularly nice touch and a particularly nice touch actually on these galaxies how the seat um, uh, seat belt kind of like clips into that little slot so it's not flopping around so I quite like that that's quite nice we've also got on this model uh, the arrival of that uh, roof bar we have that nice roof bar on this particular one moving down we get this unusual one like I said I don't believe this came for a few years so it's strange to see it on the launch brochure very nice alloy wheels them aren't they very it does look very special we've got the G has returned again G for Galaxy um, so that's nice to see in this sort of nice gold color interestingly though no roof bars that's kind of like weird that they've only had them roof bars on that gear model the high spec ultimate not having it said it's got the captain's chairs so really the glx is the only real practical one if you wanted the seven seater this does come with leather captain chairs though and it says preliminary specifications because 
At this stage, they didn't have a clue when they didn't launch this for quite some time. So, like I say, weird to see that on a launch brochure. Okay, so the Ultima, so it's preliminary specifications, so it's telling us they really didn't have a clue at this time what they were talking about. Um, so we got a 2 litre or a 2.8 uh, four speed auto, no diesel option. And that's far too dirty and noisy for this top of the range car and if you can afford the Ultima, you can afford the fuel bills. Standard ABS, traction control, immobiliser system, remote central locking, double locking, heated windscreen, quick clear alloy wheels, unique body colour, CFC free front air conditioning with auto temperature control, floor mats, four passenger map reading lights, graphic information module and trip computer, 180 degree swivelling front seats and fold up trays, rear heater, Electronically operated tilt or slide sunroof, electrically operated front and rear windows, quarter vents with global closing, remote control 2007 RDS stereo, radio cassette with key code, anti theft coating, and built in connectors to take a CD auto changer. But this is a little bit of the clause at the end. Introduction to be announced. The vehicle shown is an early production model and may not be in the final specifications. Ford policy is one of continued product improvement. The right is reserved to change specifications and colours of the model and items illustrated. For the latest details and before you place orders, always consult your Ford dealer. So I kind of think it was a bit weird to even put that Ultima on this early brochure. Doesn't sadly show us what those uh, pretend uh, leather captain chairs look like. Maybe they'd never even built them yet. Who knows? I think the nicest thing is those alloy wheels. They do look a little bit special. Did they ever actually reach production? Okay, and then it shows the specification page. I'll go through this. I'm not going to talk about it all, but of course you can pause the screen at any time. Interesting, it's only showing the Aspen, the GLX, and the gear. No mention of that made up Ultima model at this time. Um, so there's a little bit of a look at the weights. And then the mechanical features. Um, obviously, they've got all these on each model. Front and rear discs only ventilated on the 2.8 injection, but nice that the front and rear discs, even on the base model. Exterior features on each one. Alloy wheels just standard on that top gear model that you can actually get yet. Exterior functionality. Um, exterior lighting is the same on all the models. Interior features. Lighting, looks like you've got your engine compartment light, courtesy lights, passing your car compartment floor lights on that gear. If you remember that picture, there's lights everywhere they just seem to throw on the gear model. In car entertainment, instruments and controls. Instruments and controls continued. Seats and seat belts. And what else have we got? Comfort and convenience. I remember the order is Aspen GLX and Gear, that Ultima not shown anywhere and a little bit of information about the luggage compartment power points um, on all of them surprisingly and then we've got the options at extra extra cost interesting the gear's got air conditioning on isn't it quite nice well quite well spec actually gear you know you don't, so it's not that long ago, you didn't expect to see even alloy wheels on a gear. But I kind of like think at this time they're trying to make the gear higher. And then they brought in higher models and dropped the gear back down again. Um, we kind of like saw that a little bit in last Ford Friday when we were looking at the uh, 
well, a couple of weeks ago and was looking at the Ford Mondeo, the first series Ford Mondeo, how the gear lost equipment um, when the Gear X came out. Option packs, you get little packs on each one if you wanted to. Luxury pack you could get on the gear, front fog lamps, cruise control, fuel compu computer and heated front seats. And it's telling us uh, the paint, uh, metallic option on every model. It's also telling us you can get that 1.9 TDI straight away. That was only available from Autumn 95 as well. Back page is now a little bit of an idea of Ford customer care, but more interest in this, which would be the back back page, I guess. Uh, gives a nice little shot of the rear of the Galaxy. Not too much in the way of trim levels or anything like that. It's very simply uh, uh, just got this sort of Galaxy badge in this unusual script, if the camera will tune in a bit better. There we go, I think that's a little bit clearer, but you can see this unusual script for Galaxy, but nothing in the way of trim levels on the back, or even engine size, it's very simply worded on the back there. Very much this sort of reflective uh, glass going all the way across, which certainly dates it, looks and makes it look very dated today if we look on that. But more interestingly, when we open the page up proper, we get a look at you know trim levels and colours, so we'll have a look at that now. And when I say trim levels, I really mean trim colours. So we get this, um, what they're calling flow platinum grey, flow platinum grey, usual name, country platinum grey. Country Bluestone. This almost camouflage looking country uh, oyster beige. And Casina Bluestone. And Casina Oyster Beige. So essentially, the top ones are your Aspen, the middle ones are your GLX, and this is your gear colours. If we go over the page now we can actually see the actual exterior colours what are available. Only two solid colours were crystal white or garnet red so the rest were all optional extra colours. Solar silver, ultramarine, fleur red, tourmalade green, min mistral blue and Nantucket Grey. So there we go, unusual names there. A little bit of an image for no reason, but it's talking about you know, stone protection, etc. And then that brings us back to this very shiny rear cover. So there we go, there is the Ford Galaxy. Yeah, kind of not really a, a love it car, it's kind of like just there, isn't it? And it certainly did a job, personally. I'd rather go back a few years and just get a Granada estate personally, but there we go. It's certainly an interesting time, and I still think these are better than SUVs for the practicality alone. Let me know what you think if you've got any experiences or memories of the Ford Galaxy. Um, have a great weekend. We'll be back tomorrow with a short episode on, on um, the Saturday special. Um, but we'll see you very soon, so please do like and subscribe. That always helps the channel. Please do take care. Enjoy your weekend. And goodbye.